Jenny, thank you very much. The University of New Mexico and the Utah State Aggies about ready to kick it off. Let's check in with the third member of our crew, Tori Holt, downstairs. Tori? Well, thank you, Drew. We've been here for a couple of days now, and that's given us an opportunity to talk to both coaches. And speaking with Bob Davey, he told me earlier in the week that the most important thing for them is to realize that Utah State may be the best defense that they will face all season long. And they want to play assignment football and not get frustrating, frustrated realizing they may not be able to move the ball up and down on them at will. And for Matt Wells, he's starting a freshman quarterback in Daryl Gerritsen. And I asked him how confident he would be in an 18-year-old taking over for a Heisman hopeful. And he told me that he loves the confidence of his quarterback, his swagger. And that is most important for him when he goes out on the field with some of these guys on his team that are 26 years old. Should be a great game, guys. Tori, absolutely. And you know what, Anthony? You don't put a guy at quarterback if the other 10 guys in the huddle don't believe in him. You can't do it. You know that. That word swagger gets thrown around quite a bit, but I don't know if there's a position on the football field where that swagger is more important than the quarterback position. It's not always about whether or not you're flamboyant with that swagger, but you want everyone, not just the 10 guys in the huddle with you, but everyone on the team to believe that you believe in yourself. Utah State's going to kick it off. New Mexico will get it, and back deep is Carlos Wiggins. Now, Wiggins can go. He had a touchdown return of 100 yards earlier this year. He's averaging 33-plus yards a return. We're at altitude, and uh, the football will land five yards deep. Here comes Wiggins. And he's dropped short of the 15-yard line, dropped at the 14-yard line, down on special teams, Cameron Sanders for Utah State. And there's the junior college transfer, Clayton Mitchum. He's from Fort Smith, Arkansas, and he went to NEO A&M. That's Northeast Oklahoma, Northeastern Oklahoma A&M. And they like him a lot. He's had four starts. So this is not the first time he's jogged out on the football field to begin things. Mitchum set a school record as a passer at A&M, and he's a guy who's very effective throwing the football. He's got a very natural-looking release. We'll see as he plays throughout the night if that Utah State defense plays the pass more than the run. And this is Wiggins. They wanted to get him involved early, and he's going to be dropped for a yard loss. Coming up is Nevin Lawson. Here tonight's Toyota players to watch. First for New Mexico offensively, we begin with Wiggins. Carlos Wiggins, not only an all-purpose guy, but a great kick return, and I believe they have to get the football to him more effectively. Marquise Bundy, the most talented wide receiver that the Lobos have on the outside, should have a big role tonight. Second down and 11, there's Wiggins, he's in the slot. They run a lot of pistol formation. And now they'll put it up, Wiggins in the flat. And he is belted, coming up the strong safety, Brian Sweet. Maybe he got a couple of yards. Let's take a look at the Utah State players to watch defensively. And it begins with Jake Dowdy, man, he hammers people. The average is nearly 12 tackles a game, Drew. Jake Dowdy is all over the field. But Kyler Fackrell is going to have a big role tonight, especially if New Mexico throws the football more than we're used to. He's going to get after the quarterback. Already four sacks on the season. Yeah, he's got prototypical outside linebacker size at the NFL level. He's 6'5", 245. He can really run. Third down and long. And the ball's on the ground, loose, and the New Mexico jump back on it. They did not. Utah State will have a real short field. Eight-yard line of New Mexico. The first big play of the game goes the way of the Aggies. Jumping on the football is Connor Williams, the left defensive end. As Mitchum prepares to hand the football off to Casey Carey, that mesh point is really key because he tries to ride Carrier and fake out the defense. And Drew, as we talked to Bob Davey and the Lobos coaches throughout the week, they said that Clayton Mitchum hasn't been as comfortable with this triple option fake attack. Garrettson will hand the football off. Big opening, easy touchdown. 28, Joey DiMartino in the end zone for the sixth time this year. And Utah State very quickly takes advantage of that turnover. A big offensive tackle, Kevin Wimpy, one of the best players in the Mountain West Conference. 
to. Watch him there at the point of attack. The line of scrimmage moving in the favor of the Aggies. This is a defensive front from New Mexico that hasn't been very good against the run so far this season. Number nine in the Mountain West Conference, giving up 239 yards per game on the ground. Nick Diaz right down the middle, 7-0 Utah State. Well, when you're an underdog, suffice it to say, you cannot turn the football over. And unfortunately for Bob Davies' team, the last couple of weeks, they had three turnovers in each game. They played Wyoming tough. They turned it over three times. Now the early turnover, and you're upside down against a Utah State team that's accustomed to winning football games. Uh, Drew, let's take another look at this mesh point that we're describing. As Carrier is getting ready to receive the football, that's a decide option play. And even though Clayton Mitchell was an option quarterback at different points in junior college, he just wasn't comfortable with that mesh. And then there, as I described it, that line of scrimmage is moving in the favor of the Aggies. You see no Lobo defenders until the end zone is near for Joey DiMartino. Jake Thompson actually does the kicking off as you look at Bob Davey of New Mexico. Jake Thompson, the freshman from Logan, Utah. Of course, that's where Utah State is located. And once again, Wiggins will have an opportunity, this time from about the goal line. A little more room, and he gets knocked off his feet around the 21-22 yard line. So New Mexico down 7-0. He'll set up shop there. Here tonight's built for tough starting lineups. New Mexico, according to Coach Davey, really never got slowed down last week by the University of Wyoming. It was when they turned the football over, and they fell behind early, and they got back in the game. In fact, at one point, they were down 21 points. So this is not foreign territory for the Lobos right now. It's a football team that's had some self-inflicted wounds in recent weeks, but the quarterback position is going to be key to make sure they possess the football and they're decisive in the way they run it. And they pick up four straight ahead to Carrier. Zach Vigil will be the last to get up. One of the inside linebackers for Utah State will set, set up the second and six. We do see at this point Cole Gauchi making his first appearance on the field tonight. He's in the huddle. And again, Gauchi's a big, strong guy. 6'4", above 230 pounds. A sophomore from right outside Albuquerque in Rio Rancho. He's going to hold the football. This is true triple option. And you see Wiggins and how creative he can be. Pirouettes and picks up a yard or two in what could have been a two-yard loss. They said they wanted to establish Wiggins. You were doing some scouting during the week. You said they got to establish this kid. So far, he's touched it three times in the first four snaps. I'm glad I'm on the same page with the Lobos coaching staff because Carlos Wiggins is a guy that he's got that lightning in a bottle sort of mentality to him where on distance. The fact that he's only got 13 touches offensively compared to 15 returns he's had so far this season is surprising. He lines up on the line of scrimmage to the near side. Gauchi to throw it for the first time, and it was broken up by 51, Jake Dowdy. We talk about him in the run game. He dropped into his zone, made a nice play. Knocked well, down that pass, and it's three and out for New Mexico. It's a defense that prides itself on being good against the run, but when you shut down the team on first and second down in the run, now you're in a more predictable down and distance. And Jake Dowdy's been playing this game for a long time. Former walk-ons turned himself into a team captain. This punt turns over. Good-looking punt. JoJo Natson. Bruce is his given name. He goes by JoJo, and he puts it on the ground. Jeremy Morris got on the football, backup cornerback. So Morris comes up with the football. Utah State has a 7 0 lead, and they have the football when we come back. 11 47 to go, opening quarter in Albuquerque. Utah State took advantage of an early turnover in a short field. They went eight yards the first time they had it on one play, a Joey DiMartino run. 
And now Coach Wells, Matt Wells, who coached three years at the University of New Mexico, so he knows his way around this campus very well. And he's in his first year at his alma mater. He was the offensive coordinator last year for Gary Anderson. Gary moved on to Wisconsin. They're playing tonight in Champaign against the Illini, and they're up uh, big early. This is Natson on the inside toss. He breaks a tackle, and he'll pick up 11 yards before he's knocked down by Dakota Cox. Here tonight, Toyota players to watch. First, offensively, it begins with Joey DiMartino for Utah State. With the injury to Joe Hill at the running back position, DiMartino had to step up big time at the running back spot, and Travis Reynolds, probably the stickiest hands I've seen in the Mountain West Conference so far this season. They have some big physical receivers when they throw it. And they'll throw it here for the first time. And it's complete. It's Natson right around midfield. He'll pick up six or seven yards. And the players to watch defensively for New Mexico. David Guthrie from the safety position. 36 tackles already on the season. Two sacks. He plays near and behind the line of scrimmage. Dallas Bolum, I believe the most talented player that the Lobos have on defense, leading them with 40 tackles. Also great in pass coverage. Keegan Anderson in motion stops right over the guard. They run right behind him, and it's a pickup of a couple for DiMartino. He'll be a little bit shy of a first down, about a yard shy. Nick Devanzo, a true freshman from Baltimore. That's one of the continuing themes for the Lobos is they're turning that roster over. They have about five 18-year-old kids that play a lot defensively football team that's dealing with multiple things with their roster not a lot of scholarship players on the field yet just 79 overall and straight ahead first down yardage DiMartino they just ran power right in the a gap and they'll move the chains again for the Aggies take a look at the Ford starting lineup for Utah State they're big and talented up front Tyler Larson a 312 pound senior from Salt Lake City and Jordan High School anchors that line. Throw it in the flat. Natson squares his shoulders and gets a couple of yards. Well, both the little guys, the slot guys, Wiggins for New Mexico and Natson so far for Utah State, heavy in the early game plan. It's a big opportunity to be able to throw the ball to the exterior of the defense for Daryl Garrettson. Because when you start throwing the football over the middle, you try to deliver it downfield, that's where there's an opportunity to get the ball in traffic and potentially get deflections and interceptions. They run a little option and a big opening for DiMartino. First down yardage inside the 35 to the 31-yard line. David Guthrie finally tripped him up. Eighth leading rusher, DiMartino. He's really picked up the slack with Joe Hill. Gone. Now they'll throw it out in the flat to DiMartino. And this is what Utah State, Anthony, likes to do. They'll go huddle and then they'll go muddle huddle. They went no huddle there. As we spoke to Matt Wells about whether or not the tempo would change for his football team offensively this week, he said it wouldn't. But to be honest with you, I wasn't completely sure if he was being honest. But we see so far in this game, they're running the variety of tempos that we've come used to seeing from Utah State. And they're giving Garrettson safe throws early. Let him get in a rhythm. He's got a man open, and it is complete. On the outside, it's Travis Reynolds, his first reception of the game. Actually make that his second reception. With Reynolds, one of the things that he's best at is catching the football cleanly and quickly transitioning into a runner afterwards. One of the few times you'll actually see him catch the football into his body there because he's got what I like to call quiet hands, where you don't even hear the football hit his gloves as he brings it in. Double tight end formation for the Aggies. And the ball's on the ground again. And diving in there was Garrettson. Did he get it back? And that's the indication from our referee that he did get it back. If there's anyone up front defensively that's going to be in a playmaking position for the Lobos, it's usually Brett Bowers. Watch number 44 just knife to the inside gap, get into the backfield, and he doesn't only make a tackle. Gets the ball stripped away and gives another opportunity to this New Mexico football team to come up with a recovery on yet another fumble from Utah State. They lose five on that play. 
New Mexico shows blitz. They come off the edge. Garrettson has a man open, and it is a touchdown. DiMartino caught the football, and New Mexico now trails on their home field by 13 points early on. That was an impressive drive by Utah State. DiMartino with just his seventh catch of the year. First touchdown catch of the season. That was impressive for a freshman quarterback, a guy who's gotten practice reps throughout the season, but up until the last two weeks, he really hasn't gotten practice reps to prepare for the game. And he's waited his turn. He's a senior from San Diego. Extra point by Diaz is good. 14-0 Utah State. They've been most impressive early. 8.05 going in the first quarter. <laughs> Mountain West football on Route Sports is brought to you by the Ford F-150. It's not just a truck, it's an F-150, and it's built for tough. And by Frostbrew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Utah State and Albuquerque with a 14-0 early lead with Anthony Heron and Torrey Holt. I'm Drew Goodman. A short field and then a fairly lengthy drive by Utah State. And they mixed the run and the pass well with the true freshman quarterback, Daryl Garrettson. Wiggins won't get to the 20-yard line. Good coverage again by Utah State. DiMartino, known for, known for running the football, ran a little wheel route. He came wide open. Beautiful throw. And what I was so impressed with is that there was pressure coming. Normally, DiMartino would be responsible for picking that up. But as the oncoming rushers, end up in the face of Daryl Garrettson. You see DiMartino leave the backfield. The freshman quarterback keeps his calm about him in the pocket, delivers a perfect football into the end zone 21 yards later. Touchdown strike for DiMartino. Clayton Mitchum back in, and he fires a strike. Good-looking throw. Making the catch, the tight end, Andrew Aho, just his fifth catch of the year. That kind of gives you an idea of how much they run the football. You're the starting tight end, and it's just your fifth reception here in the latter part of October. It's a good-looking football from Clayton Mitchum. You see why the coaches like his abilities as a passer. He does look much more natural throwing the football than what Cole Gauchy does at this point in his career. Boy, that snap came before Mitchum was prepared for it. Do you see that, Anthony? And from the center position, I mean, he's got Dylan Farrell there snapping a senior, but the communication could be off. Even though Clayton Mitchum, he's gotten plenty of snaps up to this point in the season. Kevin Mars got the white hat on this evening. False start. Offense. Third third. 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 The New Mexico has done a tremendous job not hurting themselves in terms of penalty. In fact, they're the third least penalized team in college football. One yeah. of the things that Bob Davies established very quickly here in New Mexico. Carrier gets maybe a yard. When you're a predominant running football team and you're off schedule as New Mexico has been on all three offensive possessions it makes it very very difficult when it's consistently third and nine third and ten or or even greater than that especially when you're facing a football team that brings a variety of pass rush Utah State isn't a team that only rushes the quarterback with their defensive front so it puts additional pressure on the offensive line and the running backs to make sure they know who's going to rush in those predictable downs. Gauchi's back in there at quarterback they like to run triple option with him. It was a give read, and uh, that got blown up in the backfield. B.J. Larson was a big, strong guy. As Larson set the edge at the defensive end position, that nose guard, A.J. Pataya-Lee, he was able to just get low into the backfield. You see the pad level that's being played with. And actually, it was, looks like it was even Pataya-Lee's backup. Yeah, it was Elvis. Uh, Kumana Matangahi. Kumana Matangi made the play. I'm going to say that three or four more times uh, this evening. 
to the 30 yard line on the option. You were practicing all afternoon. You haven't even talked to anybody today. <laughs> oh, you know these Polynesian names. I've dealt with them a time or two. They can be tongue twisters. But they're on third and very long. I like the decision actually as a play caller because you're not a team who's confident throwing the football. There's no point in putting it in harm's way. This really the main opportunity that we've seen so far for New Mexico to try to change field position, get their defense in a better spot. Ben scares the punter for New Mexico. Bruce Natson back around his own 20 yard line. Scares had a great year. He's averaging almost 47 yards a punt. And man, this is a mammoth punt again. Flag comes in and Natson dropped at the 29 yard line. So when the field judge doesn't have a hat anymore, that's generally uh, an indication he threw the flag, he threw the hat, he saw multiple infractions. 50 yards on that punt. Personal foul. Receiving team number six, strike to the head, half the distance to the goal, first down, timeout. So personal foul against Utah State. That'll back them up to around the 15-yard line. 5.17 to go, 14-0 Aggies. Utah State leading 14 to nothing, and that has to please Matt Wells quite a bit in his first year as the head coach at his alma mater at 40. He's the 11th youngest coach in FBS. He was an assistant under Gary Anderson, very, very close with Gary Anderson. He talks to him at least once a week. In fact, Gary Anderson was at the BYU game two weeks ago recruiting. It was a bye week for the Badgers. Now what? Let me straighten something out real quick because the football, when we went to break, was at the 15-yard line. Now it's out at the 44-yard line. Evidently, our referee Kevin Marr indicated the personal foul was against Utah State. It was against New Mexico. This is DiMartino. Actually, check it. It's his backup. It's Robert Marshall, his first carry of the ball game. Anyhow, picking up on on Wells and Coach Anderson. He was set to go with Coach Anderson in Wisconsin, and they tapped him on his shoulder in Logan and said, we want you to be the head coach. That changed everything. Staying behind wasn't Anderson, though. 22 Keegan Anderson is the son of Gary Anderson, and the uh, junior tight end said, I want to finish my career at Utah State. He's a starter. So mom is at the game tonight here in Albuquerque, and keeping close tabs on her husband, who's in <laughs> Champaign. And last we checked, it was a big lead for Wisconsin in Champaign. It was a big opportunity for Gary Anderson to be able to go to the Big Ten Conference, take over a program that's used to winning Big Ten championships. Third down and eight for Garrettson, and that Incompletion ended a string of 13 in a row going back to last week. He'll have a first down. It's Travis Van Leeuwen, the senior from Provo. And they'll move the chains again for Utah State. 37-yard line of New Mexico, first and 10. More tempo coming in from Utah State, but great job again in protection off the blitz. And they tried to run a little bubble screen, and that was dropped by DiMartino in the flat. One of the things we're seeing so far is that there is some additional pressure coming from the Lobos' defensive front. They're not afraid to blitz. But what really works in tandem well is when you have defensive linemen who can rush well and aid those oncoming additional, those fifth and sixth rushes when you bring the blitz. They'll hand it to DiMartino, and he is tripped up in the backfield. Big defensive play, Rashad Rainey, the senior from Riverside, California. And that's one of the few negative plays that Utah State has suffered. It'll be third and 13. Big play by Rainey. New Mexico needs a stop here. They need to force Utah State to kick the football back to them. And as this outside zone play started to develop, Rainey just stayed patient, set the edge. He was the force contained guy on that snap. Ball almost got outside of him, but he made the play. 
Third down and long. They bring four, drop seven. It's complete in the flat. It'll be a first down. Travis Reynolds. He's smooth, isn't he? He really is. As the football comes towards him, he looks so comfortable and confident catching the football. He's one of these wide receivers that stays in motion as the ball's in flight. You see as it comes in, and the ball comes in a little bit hot. We see Garrison's got a bit of arm strength, but Reynolds doesn't break stride, makes the catch, gets beyond the sticks, and just keeps on stride. Yeah, how poised has Garrison been the 18-year-old so far? DeMartino, he's blowing up, and there's our man Rainey again. A shot Rainey. It's his second tackle for loss so far in this first quarter. Well, someone, sorry, partner, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, late stages, first quarter, go ahead. Uh, and someone aside from Brett Bowers as the defensive end needs to start stepping up and making plays behind the line of scrimmage, around the line of scrimmage in this front seven. Rainey's been doing well so far tonight. They bring pressure on the edge, and Garrettson tucks it down. He'll get a yard or two. Covered up by Fatu Ulale. He's a senior in 99 from Torrance, California. So it'll set up third and nine. And again, Utah State right to the line of scrimmage. See this so frequently now in college football. They average about 80 snaps a game offensively. And DiMartino this time. Once again, third and long, not a problem for Utah State. Utah State four for four now on third downs. Reynolds comes to the sidelines, and he gets a brief hug from Matt Wells. The read so far for Daryl Garrettson has been, have been very concise. They've kept the route tree very simplistic so far in this game, making sure their true freshman knows where to deliver the football. First and goal, and DiMartino on the inside handoff down around the five-yard line. Nick Devanzo, 310-pound freshman from Baltimore, Maryland. As we spoke to Matt Wells, one of the messages that he, that he was delivering, partner, was talking about how this game shouldn't just be on the shoulders of his freshman quarterback, Daryl Garrettson. We're seeing them really focus on running the football early. They go empty here on second and goal. It's a good QB draw formation. They got a screen set up, and that was diagnosed well. Wrestling Ronald Butler to the ground right around the line of scrimmage, a host of New Mexico defenders. It'll set up third and goal. They've tried to find ways to feature that guy right there, Ronald Butler, more often because he's starting to emerge. And so you see him essentially a tunnel screen route. He does a nice job attacking the football, but they ran it to the boundary side. And so there's not as much space that the defense has to cover to try and contain the ball carrier after he makes the catch. And New Mexico calls a timeout. One of those big early downs. New Mexico already down by two touchdowns on their home field with 52 seconds left in the first quarter. Bob Davey, who for years was a defensive coordinator and then, of course, the head coach at Notre Dame. Then he went into our business for about 11, 12 years. He said, I wanted to get back in. He said there were other opportunities early on. He stayed away, stayed away, but... Once it's in your blood, as you know, Anthony, it stays in your blood. And he always, you know, people say, well, how'd you end up in Albuquerque? We asked him yesterday <laughs> when we visited with him. He's so engaging, and, and he said, I, we were living in Scottsdale, always loved the southwest part of the country. And he came and looked at the facilities, and he said, you know, I know the program's down, but the facilities are very impressive here in Albuquerque. As he took this football team over, he knew the situation that they were in, that there would take some rebuilding that would have to go on. And he's a man you can tell, Drew, that is extremely patient and able to take the steps necessary. Third and goal on the roll. Garrettson end zone shot. Reynolds couldn't hold it. And it'll be fourth down. So New Mexico will force the field goal for Utah State. <laughs> Early in the career of Daryl Garrettson, he's shown the ability to throw the ball with some accuracy on the run. It's one of the things that his coaching staff really like about him. 
And this, again, is a way to cut down the read that he has to make. We see Reynolds going down, trying to get the football. He gets his hands under it for a moment, but not able to complete the process of the catch. Would have been a difficult one, but Travis Reynolds has that type of ability. Diaz is 8 for 11 this year. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is true. 17 nothing. Utah State, you know, going back to that end zone shot. I thought it was a great throw to you. I mean, he put it in the only place it could be caught by his guy. Precisely. As he rolls the pocket, this just gives it a sprint action. So it cuts down the read and also opens that window for him to try and be accurate just on a part of the field. And as you mentioned, Drew, he's throwing the football away from the defender in a place that Travis Reynolds is the only one with an opportunity to catch it. The Aggies trying to snap a two-game losing streak. And it goes back to the BYU game. It was a field goal game when Chucky Keaton went down. Pretty early in that football game against the Cougars. They lost that. They lost last week to Boise State. In fact, their last four games have come against bowl participants from a year ago. And there had to be a hangover effect, Anthony, for Utah State after the Keaton injury because not just a great player on the field, he's their leader off the field as well. When you lose a personality like that and a playmaker like that, it really infects the entire locker room, the huddle, and you mentioned that hangover. It takes a little bit of time for everyone to kind of recover from that injury, not just the players, but the coaching staff as well. And Matt Wells, he was honest about it. He said this was a moment that everyone was shocked. Let's go back to that Keaton injury against BYU on the move and such a dynamic player. In fact, the last true freshman before Daryl Garrison tonight to start at quarterback for Utah State was Chucky Keaton. And check this out. It was his true freshman year, game number one in Auburn, Alabama against the defending national champs. Back to that story in a moment. Back into the football game and tucking it down and sliding for a positive game is Clayton Mitchum. But going back to that game in Auburn, Alabama, you say, well, how did he do? How about this? Utah State against the defending national champs. Three minutes to go. They're up 10. Right. <laughs> Auburn scores a touchdown, and they execute a perfect onside kick. They get it again. They end up winning the football game. But Chucky Keaton almost pulled off the monumental upset as a true freshman. That will be the final snap of the first quarter, dominated by Utah State, 17-0. The Aggies leading the Lobos at University Stadium in Albuquerque.